to the podcast of, uh, of course, they make me crazy. You know, we grew up with a bipolar mother addicted to pills who experienced a lot of hardships. We started this podcast to talk about our experiences with you. You know, you can really start to feel lost and trapped in their world. And we're hoping our crazy, sometimes funny stories, living with someone like that, helps you to feel normal, whole, and happy again. If you have little ones around, though, this would be a good time to pop in your headphones. Our discussions are for adults only, please. Hi there, I'm April, and this is our first episode of Of A Course They Make Me Crazy. And this is where we're going to learn uh, why I decided to create this podcast. It's going to be all the good, all the ugly, and the straight up strange reasons of why. But before I introduce my guest, who happens to be my little sis, Amanda, uh, Amanda, say hi. She's here with me now. Hello. Uh, I want to get into a little of our family background. So Amanda and I have the same mother, but we have different uh, biological fathers. Uh, Mom had me at like 15 and a half years old. And then about a year later, she had my brother. And mom's family had a whole mess of their own problems and they ran off to deal with them themselves. And we're going to get a little more into that later, but she really didn't have any help to raise me and my little brother. And again, she was a teenager. She had a little, little bit of help here and there, but nothing to really, you know, count, but uh, she was able to make it. She did unfortunately have to drop out of school and she ended up getting a job at a truck stop cleaning toilets to feed us. Now this was back in the 70s, y'all, by the way, and even with the weight of the world on her shoulders, she was a fun and loving person. And I say that because while she was working and taking care of us and, and, and you know, uh, basically an adult as a teenager, she was also getting the shit kicked out of her by my biological dad. Um, and even through all that, I grew up seeing her smile. She, she beamed, she had vibrant energy. By the way, with uh, some at one point missing a tooth because of the situation with my father, but she was our angel. And um, it, me and my brother and mom, we were like the three musketeers. That's what she used to say, like before she'd leave us to go to work, you know, she'd hug us, uh, hug us and say, we're the three musketeers. And I feel blessed that I got to experience a hardworking, joyful mom. Now I'm breezing through a lot of this and, and we'll get more into the, the, the nitty gritty of it all. But uh, mom ended up marrying an amazing man um, who would do anything for her. And that's Amanda's dad. Now, uh, by the time Amanda was like five years old, mom started to change a bit. Don't you think that was about the age, Mandy? Yeah, I'd say about five years old. Yeah. And that's when she was like, she'd start to have like her dark days, her depressed days. You know, she wouldn't shower. She wouldn't get off the couch for days. And she just, she really started to take a lot of medication. And seeing her change was very confusing for me. Uh, because I didn't understand it. You know, I had um, this young, vibrant mom for so many years. And so if Mandy was, Mandy's 10 years younger than me, so I was about like 15 years old when I started to see this. But I don't want you to think this is all going to be doom and gloom. Uh, we have some funny and we have <laughs> some very <laughs> crazy messed up family stories that will hopefully enlighten you and make you realize that, that you're not alone. And we want to you know, we're hoping that this podcast will make you feel normal in the situations that aren't so normal. I want to be clear that this is more about, you know, people that live with those people. And, and we have our shit too, you know, that we have to deal with because we have to deal with their ups and downs. So uh, let's bring Amanda in now. Um, again, I said Mandy was uh, 10 years younger and I, oh, oh, before I, I messaged her the other day and I was like, hey, I got this harebrained idea <laughs> that I want to do a podcast and uh, you have to be part of it. <laughs> 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 and I said, uh, start thinking of some funny stories about mom, you know, that many people might not just believe. And so, you know, with that being said, Mandy, I think we should probably say too that Mom passed away, what, about three years ago now, right? Yeah, it's about three years she's been gone. Yeah, and so she overdosed on her medication. 
um, yep. and passed away. And, you know, so we know the pain that it is to lose a loved one to this. And so, but, uh, so I don't want you to think that, you know, our funny stories, um, don't come with a lot of pain. Okay. So they're funny now to us, right, Amanda, they're funny now to us, but they are funny now at the time, not so much, but I can look back and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> situations I had to deal with <laughs> but yeah at the time it was very rough and hard to handle and coping with it but yes yeah, so it now I can look back and take a laugh at yeah. what we dealt with yeah and yeah because it was like a comedy skit shit storm <laughs> our life yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, as I'm pretty sure a lot of yours, uh, a lot of your lives have probably been the same. And so, you know, and there were even times where I was just so angry at some of the shit that mom would do. Um, but then I'd go have a drink or two with a girlfriend and start telling them. And then they would start to laugh about it. And then because they were laughing, I was laughing because I was like, this is so crazy. Of course it's funny. You know, yep. this is funny. So anyway, so uh, when I asked Amanda to, to um, think of some stories, the thing that came to your first mind was, uh, mom, we're going to Walmart. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so that evening, we have a summer home on Catawba, Catawba Island here in Ohio. And me and my girlfriend had went out for a couple of drinks. And I had left mom back at the trailer. And I had locked up her medication. But me stupidly uh, threw the key underneath my pillow in my bedroom. <laughs> so mom found it. Uh, I had came home about 3 a.m., with my girlfriend, she dropped me off and I walked in on one of mom's episodes, which was her on the ground, half naked, yeah. and this time in Ohio puke. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so let's, let's back up a little bit as to why mom's medication was locked up. There came a time where um, mom's doctor had a sit down with um, mom and our dad, and uh, she said, because mom would overtake, overtake her medication. I'm sure you've all probably had somebody that has done that before, but it got so bad that, I mean, in this woman, I'm telling you, it, to get her medication, Mandy, she'd take down a freaking bull, wouldn't she, to get her medication? Yeah, she would get superhuman strength out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> She became like the mom incredible hawk if she wanted more of her call. <laughs> Even dad would get scared at times. Yeah. And so when we heard that mom's medication had to be locked up, that our dad was gonna have to take on that responsibility, my first uh, uh, reaction was, shit, George is gonna this is gonna be a nightmare. And uh, because she does get super superhuman strength. And um, when it comes to taking someone down to get what she wants. And so she, um, George had to lock it up. And like he went and got like the toughest toolbox with like a freaking padlock of, you know, and she got into it one night, didn't she, Manny? She was able to like, yeah. uh, she, I'm sure she, I'm sure she got in it a, a bunch of times. Mom could take a hammer. She could take anything and she'd get that damn thing off. Right. So yeah. I came home from school one day and she was in the basement banging that thing open. <laughs> <laughs> that was another story there. That's another one. <laughs> oh, Lordy. But, uh, so, okay. So you, like a dumbass, you left the key underneath your pillow. Yeah. Uh, you came home and, um, so mom had herself a party of one. Yep. Uh, it was not nor it was, it was normal, you know, to kind of, unfortunately walk in on your mom completely incoherent and out of her damn mind <laughs> um but this time something just hit me and I didn't feel right putting her to bed this time I was scared for some reason that this time if I put her to bed she might not wake up this time so that's when I called you probably about 3 a.m 4 in the morning yeah. panicking yeah and uh, was asking 
what, what should I do? Because I didn't want to involve our father that has already been going through hell himself with his blood pressure dealing with mom, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we decided between you and me to take her to the hospital. Well, mom wasn't going to go to the hospital. <laughs> okay, so our mom hates freaking hospitals, okay? Why? Well, one, she can't smoke in one. Yep. Two, um, they regulate her meds, which is not what she wants. Mm -hmm. And three, they boss her around. They tell her what to do. And she is not one to be told <laughs> no. what to do or how to behave. Yep. So the hell if she was going to go to the hospital. <laughs> so, okay, this is like, uh, by the way, I think, was I working in news at this time? Okay, I had my own morning show. So yeah, you, you had to work, I believe. Um, like you had to be up at five or be there at five in the morning or something. Yeah. And so when so Mandy, I think you were getting up for work that by that time, I'm not sure. Yeah. So Mandy, when the phone rang, I was like, I answered it and I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't normal. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong? Yeah, Mandy, yeah, I was like, what's she do now is what I said to Amanda. Now what's she do? Yep. Um, and Mandy's like, ape, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, and she's all like hysterical. So, um, and I could hear mom like moaning in the background and like, oh, mm -hmm. dang. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know, you know? And so, um, you said to me, should I call an ambulance? And, um, or no, I said, call an ambulance. And you're like, I don't yeah. want to call an ambulance. Dad will flip out because ambulances cost like, you know, $500 if, um, they just do. Right. Maybe, yeah, it's, it's an automatic 500, and I didn't want to draw attention to our home. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the neighbors you know, are already like, who in the hell moved into the neighborhood down the street? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so we're like, okay. And I said, well, Mandy, are you guys coherent enough to drive mom? You know, because mm -hmm. you guys had been out having drinks and stuff. And, um, so you were, and, um, uh, Mandy and I, we were like, okay, how are we going to, how is this going to happen? How are we going to get mom? <laughs> we, we both Came up with the idea of, uh, luckily I had, uh, my girlfriend, Heidi, uh, a couple trailers down from me. Uh, so we came up with the idea to mom loved Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> she loved her Wally world. Wally World and Wally World, thank God, is a 24 hour store. <laughs> so, <laughs> mom, remembering she has no clothes on besides a t shirt and a pair of panties. <laughs> Grandma panties. Grandma panties with her crazy hair and no makeup, looking completely insane. I said, Mom, you want to go to Walmart? No yeah. bra. No bra. Let's go. <laughs> yeah yeah mom's like laid out passed out with puke uh coming out of her mouth and mm -hmm. you ask her if she wants to go to walmart at three o'clock in the morning and she pops right back up like a one of those buoys you know it's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, she amazingly was able to stand up <laughs> yeah and uh, we got her to the car uh, my girlfriend thank god because i was not thinking at the time to put child lock doors and locks on the back doors thank god okay but first off she <laughs> stood up but you too because i remember hearing you struggle oh yeah that was a struggle. had to like drag her or walk her like you know what i mean your shoulder on, on each side of mom to get yeah. her into the car she had no bra on <laughs> she had mm -hmm. a t-shirt she didn't have any shoes on either you you grabbed her shoes and you grabbed a pair of pants right uh, no, I didn't get a chance to even do that. I believe I just got her. I, my main concern was getting her in the car and getting her to the hospital at that time. Yeah. So yeah, mom had no clothes besides the clothes that she had on her at the time. Which were um, t-shirt. Yeah, the t-shirt and her, her granny panties. <laughs> <laughs> sexy, sexy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we finally got mom into the car and she thinks we are on our way to Wally World at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> She's like, and, hey, Mandy, I need cigarettes and Diet Coke. So those were like mom's staple. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so, yeah. Okay. So we're, she, and, and so Walmart, it, you turn one way to go to Walmart and then you, you had to turn another way to go to the hospital, right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, we came to that turn and she had her eyes set on Walmarts and we took the other turn and all hell broke loose after that. <laughs> Mom, all of a sudden I hear Mandy going, My, April, mom's tr trying to jump out of the <laughs> And then in the, in the background I hear mom saying, Mandy, we're, the number one. We're, we're, we're not going to Walmart, Walmart's that way. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. Yep. Even uh my, my friend Heidi was uh yelling at her too. <laughs> Joni <laughs> And I uh, yeah, she uh panically freaked out, uh trying to open the door as the car was turning. Thank God we had those locks on. <laughs> and um yeah, uh I had you on the phone the whole time, I believe, while we were taking that ride. And y'all, I mean, like literally, mom, if, if she, if they, if they did not have those child locks, mom would have literally jumped out of a moving car at that yep. point to go to Walmart. Oh, yeah. She, yes. <laughs> That's what was insane. <laughs> <laughs> thank God you guys had those. Yes, thank God. That's, yes, that. That saved her life, honestly, probably. Probably saved her life because we were taking a turn when she was. It was like having a toddler in the backseat throwing a very bad tantrum <laughs> and kicking and screaming to get out of the car to go to Wally World with and no pants on. <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't kick your friend in the back of the head um while she was driving because remember mom had superhuman strength when it came to like anything that she wanted you know i i don't doubt if she did because you know things get foggy when you're in the heat of the moment yeah. i i do remember heidi <laughs> yelling at her <laughs> so i mean it, it was it was pretty rough ride after she realized we were not going to turn around to wally world <laughs> to go to walmart <laughs> that that was not a mistake <laughs> So you guys roll up to the hospital and I'm sure, uh, you know, this is a party town, a summer party town. So that yes. hospital has seen their uh, share of, you know, craziness coming in, but you three roll up and, you know, we got mom in her granny panties and her t-shirt, probably looking like a hot mess. She probably had puke coming down her front of her shirt. I don't know if she did or not, but um, probably hadn't you know, had her hair washed in days. And, no. and then you guys get to the hospital and they admit her, right? Yeah, I had to um, have her stay in the car. Well, she had to be locked inside of the car for one. And I walked in and got one of the nurses and told them the situation that she wasn't being compliant. I don't know if that's the correct word, you know, wanting to go into the hospital so they had to come out and the nurses um took took it over from there yeah she, she was not having it after that yeah. and that's when um yeah they admitted her in there they treated her for an overdose they gave her the charcoal and um they admitted her and after that i had went home and just waited you and me waited for a phone call yeah and after so that you know, when you are dealing with someone with, you know, mental illness or, you know, and, and really back then it wasn't, that wasn't talked about, was it Mandy? You know, it no, that was a, a hush hush thing. We, we kept it to ourselves. We kept it to ourselves except for our very close family members, but just in society itself, um, it's not talked about like it is now, right? Yeah. So, correct. And when mom was first diagnosed, which happened to be in the 80s, late 80s, yeah, it really wasn't talked about at all like it is now. You know, and it you wasn't have, understood either. It was a very misunderstood diagnosis for a lot of people. Right. And then I think too, for us as a family, you know, you were 
such a little girl that you grew up with mom like that. Mm -hmm. And so for myself, our brother and our father, we didn't grow up or, you know, when uh, Amanda's um, dad, my stepdad met mom, she was in that vibrant, you know, I can take on the world. Uh, and she did um, take on the world. She did until she couldn't anymore. And then mm -hmm. so when we saw her changing, it was very confusing to all of us. And I think that it was very frustrating for mom. And it was very frustrating for us because we didn't understand it. And I don't yeah. think we understood it. So it made us all... starting to do oddball things that wasn't norm to us. Exactly. Staying and up five days in a row. Staying <laughs> up five days in a row. Yeah, we had to put her, and this is for another episode, but um, we had to put her in a, um, well, she called it the funny farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more like a detox. And I get why she called it the funny farm. I mean, there was a guy there that ate cigarette butts. Um, yep. You know, like he popped them like they were potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> why, why she said that but um so when she was in the hospital you know for us anytime we get a glimpse of hope that mom's going to be better right so um the nurse the next day said we're going to suggest when the doctor gets in that he sends her to a detox facility mm -hmm. and i remember thinking oh thank you, Jesus, you know, thank you, God, she's going to get help because right. little did I know that, um, that it takes a lot more than, than just a detox center, you know, to, to man this bipolar disorder, which she was diagnosed with later on in life. Um, yeah, and not to get confused with the bipolar disorder and the detoxing, mom was also addicted to painkillers. We want to throw that in there. Yes, thank you. Which played in part with her bipolar disorder too. So, well, we're going to close this up. Um, but you're probably wondering because we got a whole mess of these, <laughs> 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 and some of them just get better and better and crazier. But uh, you're probably wondering, who in the hell did your mom come from? <laughs> you yeah. know, because, uh, again, you, you might have remembered me saying at the beginning of the podcast, you know, she had um, my brother and I at about 15 and a half years old, and she didn't have any family around to help her, right? So, um, you know, who were her parents? Where were they? What, what, were they, what were they doing? Did they know about her struggles? Uh, yeah, they were part of them. You know, that's, what do you think, man? Oh, big, played a big part, big part in her life. Yeah. And, and so we love our grandma. We call her Graham, you know, mm -hmm. one of uh, my very favorite people in the world. Wouldn't you say, Mandy? Yes. Uh, grandma, she's the best grandma I honestly could ask God for. Yeah. She was very giving and she just, she wanted everybody to be happy. She just, I just she remember did. her, she just wanted everybody happy. And and I think it's because she had a lot of sadness in, in her. Yeah, guilt, maybe guilt, sadness. I. And by the way, she wasn't a normal grandma. <laughs> no, no, she was not. <laughs> <laughs> we loved her, but this is not the grandma who's going to bake you pie and cook you hot soup when you're sick. No, she's going to say, okay, do you want um, Taco Bell? Do you want um, Arby's or McDonald's for dinner tonight? And I'll go through the drive-thru. <laughs> yep, that was it. <laughs> and you're like, hell yeah, I'll take uh, Arby's tonight, Graham. <laughs> so uh, for a lack of better words, she was a situation for sure. Okay. So uh, she was married to our grandfather um, until uh, our grandfather left her for Jack. Uh, yeah. Jack is the man he met at a nudie beach. The same nudie beach he took Rams and their six kids to on vacation. So next episode, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to give you a glimpse into that and introduce them 
their characters into all of this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I think this episode or, you know, what I would like you all to know is that even when it feels inappropriate, um, laugh about stuff, right, Mandy? I mean, doesn't it feel yes. good to laugh about it? Yes, you've got to let it out in some type of a way. Yeah. After you're done dealing with that or whatever you're dealing with, you've, you've got to either laugh it out, cry it out, get it out some way. You can't hold that in. Exactly. I mean, I used to go running a lot because, you know, I hate to say that, but I want to punch mom in the head some days, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, we've had our, we've had our bras um, for sure. Um, but, you know, not, not throwing punches. We just wrestled each other on the floor because I was trying to get meds out of her. <laughs> yeah. I had a couple, couple of rough tumbles with mom too. Yeah, some hard rolls. <laughs> Um, you, get her off me, Dad. Get her off me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we know that it's not easy to laugh in the heat of the moment, but no. you need to find your outlet in order to do that. I was actually listening to um, Steve Furtick. Stephen Furtick, um, you, Mandy, I told you about him, uh, the, the pastor of Elevation Church. Um, mm. He's got a big following. And today he said something that really uh, hit me. Um, and it said, don't lose your joy. Don't lose your joy because your joy is your immune system. Yes. And I thought, ain't that the truth, you know? Um, so we would love to hear some of your crazy stories too, right, Mandy? Yes, would love it. Would love it. We want to laugh with you and you know, we want to share more coping um, skills that we used in our life to, to deal with some of this. But mm -hmm. next episode, we'll go ahead and we're going to introduce you to all Grandpa and Grams. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know why we called this episode, Of Course They Make Me Crazy. Of us living with people suffering from mental illness have a lot to deal with too. They're not the only ones hurting. We hurt for them and we carry their burdens because we love them. We're not social workers and we don't have any professional training. We're just two girls who have lived through some things too. And we'd love to hear your story as well. Let's build a community. Email us at of course they make me crazy at gmail.com.